Thor Heyerdahl, Thor Heyerdahl, October 6, 1914, April 18, 2002, was a Norwegian adventurer and ethnographer with a background in zoology, botany, and geography. He became notable for his Kantiki expedition in 1947, in which he sailed 8,000 kilometers, 5,000 miles, across the Pacific Ocean in a hand-built raft from South America to the Tuamotu Islands. The expedition was designed to demonstrate that ancient people could have made long sea voyages, creating contacts between separate cultures. This was linked to a diffusionist model of cultural development. Heyerdahl subsequently made other voyages designed to demonstrate the possibility of contact between widely separated ancient people, notably the Ratu expedition of 1970, when he sailed from the west coast of Africa to Barbados in a papyrus reed boat. He was appointed a government scholar in 1984. In May 2011, the Thor Heyerdahl archives were added to UNESCO's Memory of the World Register. At the time, this list included 238 collections from all over the world. The Heyerdahl archives span the years 1937 to 2002 and include his photographic collection, diaries, private letters, expedition plans, articles, newspaper clippings, original book, and article manuscripts. The Heyerdahl archives are administered by the Kontiki Museum and the National Library of Norway in Oslo. Heyerdahl was born in Larvik, Norway, the son of master brewer Thor Heyerdahl, 1869-1957 and his wife, Alison Ling, 1873-1965. As a young child, Heyerdahl showed a strong interest in zoology, inspired by his mother who had a strong interest in Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. He created a small museum in his childhood home, with a common adder, Vipera baris, as the main attraction. He studied zoology and geography at the Faculty of Biological Science at the University of Oslo. At the same time, he privately studied Polynesian culture and history, consulting what was then the world's largest private collection of books and papers on Polynesia, owned by Bianco Epelian, a wealthy wine merchant in Oslo. This collection was later purchased by the University of Oslo Library from Croe Pelian Sayers and was attached to the Kontiki Museum Research Department. After seven terms and consultations with experts in Berlin, a project was developed and sponsored by Heyerdahl's zoology professors. Christine Bonavie and Hjalmar Brock. He was to visit some isolated Pacific Island groups and study how the local animals had found their way there. Just before sailing together to the Marquesas Islands in 1936, Heyerdahl married his first wife, Liv Kusharan Torp, 1916-1969, whom he had met shortly before enrolling at the university, and who had studied economics there. The couple had two sons, Thor Jr. and Bjorn. The marriage ended in divorce. After the occupation of Norway by Nazi Germany, he served with the Free Norwegian Forces from 1944, in the far north province of Finnmark. In 1949, Heyerdahl married Yvonne de Decom Simonsen, 1924-2006. They had three daughters, Annette, Marion, and Helene Elizabeth thought they were divorced in 1969. Heyerdahl blamed their separation on his being away from home and differences in their ideas for bringing up children. In his autobiography, he concluded that he should take the entire blame for their separation. In 1991, Heyerdahl married Jacqueline Beer, born 1932, as his third wife. They lived in Tenerife, Canary Islands and were very actively involved with archaeological projects, especially in Tucum, Peru, and as of until his death in 2002. He still had been hoping to undertake an archaeological project in Samoa before he died. Heyerdahl died on April 18, 2002 in Calamisheri, Liguria, Italy, where he had gone to spend the Easter holidays with some of his closest family members. The Norwegian government gave him a state funeral in Oslo Cathedral on April 26, 2002. He is buried in the garden of the family home in Calamisheri. He was an atheist. The events surrounding his stay on the Marquesas, most of the time on Fatu Eva, were told first in his book Pa Jack Detter Paradise at Hunt for Paradise 1938 which was published in Norway but, following the outbreak of World War II, never translated and largely forgotten. Many years later, having achieved notability with other adventures and books on other subjects, Heyerdahl published a new account of this voyage under the title Fatu Eva, London, Allen & Unwin, 1974. The story of his time on Fatu Eva and his side trip to Hivoa and Mohotani is also related in Green was the Earth on the Seventh Day, Random House, 1996. 
In 1947, Hyerdal and five fellow adventurers sailed from Peru to the Tuamoto Islands, French Polynesia in a pipe high raft that they had constructed from balsa wood and other native materials, christened the Contiki. The Contiki expedition was inspired by old reports and drawings made by the Spanish conquistadors of Inca rafts, and by native legends and archaeological evidence suggesting contact between South America and Polynesia. The Contiki smashed into the reef at Raroya in the Tuamotas on August 7, 1947, after a 101 day, 4,300 nautical mile, 5,000 mile or 8,000 kilometers journey across the Pacific Ocean. Heyerdahl had nearly drowned at least twice in childhood and did not take easily to water, he said later that there were times in each of his raft voyages when he feared for his life. Kantiki demonstrated that it was possible for a primitive raft to sail the Pacific with relative ease and safety, especially to the west, with the trade winds. The raft proved to be highly maneuverable, and fish congregated between the nine balsa logs in such numbers that ancient sailors could have possibly relied on fish for hydration in the absence of other sources of fresh water. Other rafts have repeated the voyage, inspired by Kantiki. Heyerdahl's book about has been translated into 70 languages. The documentary film of the expedition entitled Kantiki won an Academy Award in 1951. A dramatized version was released in 2012, also called Kantiki, and was nominated for both the Best Foreign Language Oscar at the 85th Academy Awards and a Golden Globe Award for Best Foreign Language Film at the 70th Golden Globe Awards. It was the first time that a Norwegian film was nominated for both an Oscar and a Golden Globe. Anthropologists continued to believe that Polynesia was settled from west to east, based on linguistic, physical, and genetic evidence, migration having begun from the Asian mainland. There are controversial indications, though, of some sort of South American-slash-Polynesian contact most notably in the fact that the South American sweet potato is served as a dietary staple throughout much of Polynesia. Blood samples taken in 1971 and 2008 from Easter Islanders without any European or other external descent were analyzed in a 2011 study, which concluded that the evidence supported some aspects of Heyerdahl's hypothesis. This result has been questioned because of the possibility of contamination by South Americans after European contact with the islands. However, more recent DNA work, after Heyerdahl's death, contradicts the post European contact contamination hypothesis finding the South American DNA sequences to be far older than that. Heyerdahl had attempted to counter the linguistic argument with the analogy that he would prefer to believe that African Americans came from Africa, judging from their skin color, and not from England, judging from their speech. Heyerdahl claimed that in Incan legend there was a sun god named Contisi Viracocha who was the supreme head of the mythical fair-skinned people in Peru. The original name for Viracocha was Contiki or Ilatiki, which means sun tiki or fire tiki. Kantiki was high priest and sun king of these legendary white men who left enormous ruins on the shores of Lake Titicaca. The legend continues with the mysterious bearded white men being attacked by a chief named Kerry, who came from the Coquimbo Valley. They had a battle on an island in Lake Titicaca, and the fair race was massacred. However, Kantiki and his closest companions managed to escape and later arrived on the Pacific coast. The legend ends with Kantiki and his companions disappearing westward out to sea. When the Spaniards came to Peru, Hyerdal asserted, the Incas told them that the colossal monuments that stood deserted about the landscape were erected by a race of white gods who had lived there before the Incas themselves became rulers. The Incas described these white gods as wise, peaceful instructors who had originally come from the north in the morning of time and taught the Incas primitive forebears architecture as well as manners and customs. They were unlike other Native Americans in that they had white skins and long beards and were taller than the Incas. The Incas said that the white gods had then left as suddenly as they had come and fled westward across the Pacific. After they had left, the Incas themselves took over power in the country. Hyerdahl said that when the Europeans first came to the Pacific Islands, they were astonished that they found some of the natives to have relatively light skins and beards. There were whole families that had pale skin, hair varying in color from reddish to blonde. In contrast, most of the Polynesians had golden brown skin, raven black hair, and rather flat noses. Heyerdahl claimed that when Jacob Brogavane first discovered Easter Island in 1722, he supposedly noticed that many of the natives were white-skinned. Heyerdahl claimed that these people could count their ancestors who were white-skinned right back to the time of Tiki and Hatumachua, when they first came sailing across the sea from a mountainous land in the east which was scorched by the sun. The ethnographic evidence for these claims is outlined in Heyerdahl's book Aku Aku, The Secret of Easter Island. 
Island. Hyardal proposed that Tiki's Neolithic people colonized the then uninhabited Polynesian Islands as far north as Hawaii, as far south as New Zealand, as far east as Easter Island, and as far west as Samoa and Tonga around 580. They supposedly sailed from Peru to the Polynesian Islands on Pipe's large rafts built from balsa logs, complete with sails and each with a small cottage. They built enormous stone statues carved in the image of human beings on Pitcairn, the Marquesas, and Easter Island that resembled those in Peru. They also built huge pyramids on Tahiti and Samoa with steps like those in Peru. But all over Polynesia, Hyardal found indications that Tiki's peaceable race had not been able to hold the islands alone for long. He found evidence that suggested that seagoing war canoes as large as Viking ships and lashed together two and two had brought Stone Age Northwest American Indians to Polynesia around 1100, and they mingled with Tiki's people. The oral history of the people of Easter Island, at least as it was documented by Hyardal, is completely consistent with this theory, as is the archaeological record he examined. Hyerdal 1958. In particular, Hyerdal obtained a radiocarbon date of 400 for a charcoal fire located in the pit that was held by the people of Easter Island to have been used as an oven by the Long Ears, which Hyerdal's Rapa Nui sources, reciting oral tradition, identified as a white race that had ruled the island in the past. Hyerdal 1958. Hyerdal further argued in his book American Indians in the Pacific that the current inhabitants of Polynesia migrated from an Asian source but by an alternate route. He proposes that Polynesians traveled with the wind along the North Pacific Current. These migrants then arrived in British Columbia. Hyardal called contemporary tribes of British Columbia, such as the Tlingit and Haida, descendants of these migrants. Hyardal claimed that cultural and physical similarities existed between these British Columbian tribes, Polynesians, and the Old World source. Hyardal's claims aside, however, there is no evidence that the Tlingit, Haida or other British Columbian tribes have an affinity with Polynesians. Hyerdal's theory of Polynesian origins has not gained acceptance among anthropologists. Physical and cultural evidence had long suggested that Polynesia was settled from west to east, migration having begun from the Asian mainland, not South America. In the late 1990s, genetic testing found that the mitochondrial of the Polynesians is more similar to people from Southeast Asia than to people from South America showing that their ancestors most likely came from Asia. Anthropologist Robert Carl Suggs included a chapter titled The Contiki Myth in his 1960 book on Polynesia, concluding that the Contiki theory is about as plausible as the tales of Atlantis, Mew, and Children of the Sun. Like most such theories, it makes exciting light reading, but as an example of scientific method it fares quite poorly. Anthropologist and National Geographic Explorer-in-Residence Wade Davis also criticized Heyerdahl's theory in his 2009 book The Wayfinders, which explores the history of Polynesia. Davis says that Heyerdahl ignored the overwhelming body of linguistic, ethnographic, and ethnobotanical evidence, augmented today by genetic and archaeological data, indicating that he was patently wrong. A 2009 study by Norwegian researcher Eric Thorsby suggested that there was some merit to Heyerdahl's ideas and that, while Polynesia was colonized from Asia, some contact with South America also existed. Some critics suggest, however, that Thorsby's research is inconclusive because his data may have been influenced by recent population contact. However, more recent work indicates that the South American component of Easter Island people's genomes predates European contact a team including Anna Sapfo Malaspinas, from the Natural History Museum of Denmark, analyzed the genomes of 27 native Rapanui people and found that their DNA was on average 76% Polynesian, 8% Native American and 16% European. Analysis showed that, although the European lineage could be explained by contact with white Europeans after the island was discovered in 1722 by Dutch sailors, the South American component was much older dating to between about 1,280 and 1,495, soon after the island was first colonized by Polynesians in around 1,200. Together with ancient skulls found in Brazil with solely Polynesian DNA- this does suggest some pre-European contact traveled to and from South America from Polynesia. In 1955 to 1956, Heyerdahl organized the Norwegian archaeological expedition to Rapa Nui, Easter Island. The expedition's scientific staff included Arne Skjalsvold, Carlisle Smith, Edwin Ferdin, Gonzalo Figueroa, and William Malloy. 
Heyerdahl and the professional archaeologists who traveled with him spent several months in Rapa Nui investigating several important archaeological sites. Highlights of the project include experiments in the carving, transport and erection of the notable Moai, as well as excavations at such prominent sites as Orongo and Pike. The expedition published two large volumes of scientific reports, reports off the Norwegian archaeological expedition to Easter Island in the East Pacific, and Heyerdahl later added a third, The Art of Easter Island. Heyerdahl's popular book on the subject, Aku Aku was another international bestseller. In Easter Island, The Mystery Solved, Random House, 1989 Heyerdahl offered a more detailed theory of the island's history. Based on native testimony and archaeological research, he claimed the island was originally colonized by Hanau Eep, Long Ears, from South America, and that Polynesian Hanau Momoko, Short Ears, arrived only in the mid 16th century, they may have come independently or perhaps were imported as workers. According to Heyerdahl, Something happened between Admiral Rogovane's discovery of the island in 1722 and James Cook's visit in 1774, while Rogovane encountered white, Indian, and Polynesian people living in relative harmony and prosperity, Cook encountered a much smaller population consisting mainly of Polynesians and living in privation. Heyerdahl notes the oral tradition of an uprising of short ears against the ruling long ears. The long ears dug a defensive moat on the eastern end off island and filled it with kindling. During the uprising, Heyerdahl claimed, the long ears ignited their moat and retreated behind it, but the short ears found a way around it, came up from behind, and pushed all but two of the long ears into the fire. This moat was found by the Norwegian expedition and it was partly cut down into the rock. Layers of fire were revealed but no fragments of bodies. As for the origin of the people of Easter Island, DNA tests have shown a connection to South America. Critics conjecture that this was a result of recent events. But whether this is inherited from a person coming in later times is hard to know. If the story that, almost, all long ears were killed in a civil war is true, as the islanders' story goes, it would be expected that the statue building South American bloodline would have been nearly utterly destroyed, leaving for the most part the invading Polynesian bloodline. In 1969 and 1970, Heyerdahl built two boats from papyrus and attempted to cross the Atlantic Ocean from Morocco in Africa. Based on drawings and models from ancient Egypt, the first boat, named Ra, after the Egyptian sun god, was constructed by boat builders from Lake Chattising. Papyrus reed obtained from Lake Tana in Ethiopia and launched into the Atlantic Ocean from the coast of Morocco. The Ra crew included Thor Heyerdahl, Norway, Norman Baker, USA, Carlo Mari, Italy, Yuri Senkevich, USSR. Santiago Henneves, Mexico, George Sauriel, Egypt, and Abdullah Jibrin, Chad. Only Heyerdahl and Baker had sailing and navigation experience. After a number of weeks, Ra took on water. The crew discovered that a key element of the Egyptian boat building method had been neglected a tether that acted like a spring to keep the stern high in the water while allowing for flexibility. Water and storms eventually caused it to sag and break apart after sailing more than 6,400 kilometers. 4,000 miles. The crew was forced to abandon Ra, some hundred miles, 160 kilometers, before the Caribbean islands, and was saved by a yacht. The following year, 1970, a similar vessel, Ra 2, was built of papyrus by Demetrio, Juan and Jose Lamachi from Lake Titicaca in Bolivia and likewise set sail across the Atlantic from Morocco, this time with great success. The crew was mostly the same. Though Jibrin had been replaced by Keohara from Japan on Madani Etuhani from Morocco. The boat became lost and was the subject of a United Nations search and rescue mission. The search included international assistance, including people as far afield as Lu Chihu of New Zealand. The boat reached Barbados, thus demonstrating Thamariners could have dealt with transatlantic voyages by sailing with the Canary Current. The Ratu is now in the Kantiki Museum in Oslo, Norway. The book The Ra Expeditions and the film documentary Ra, 1972, were made about the voyages. Apart from the primary aspects of the expedition, Heyerdahl deliberately selected a crew representing a great diversity in race, nationality, religion and political viewpoint in order to demonstrate that at least in their own little floating island, people could cooperate and live peacefully. Additionally, the expedition took samples of marine pollution and presented their report to the United Nations. Heyerdahl built yet another reed boat, Tigris, which was intended to demonstrate that trade and migration could have linked Mesopotamia with the Indus Valley civilization in what is now Pakistan and western India. 
Tigris was built in Iraq and sailed with its international crew through the Persian Gulf to Pakistan and made its way into the Red Sea. After about five months at sea and still remaining seaworthy, the Tigris was deliberately burnt in Djibouti, on April 3, 1978, as a protest against the wars raging on every side in the Red Sea and Horn of Africa. In his open letter to the UN Secretary General Kurt Waldheim, Hayyardal explained his reasons. Today we burn our proud ship, to protest against inhuman elements in the world of 1978, now we are forced to stop at the entrance to the Red Sea. Surrounded by military airplanes and warships from the world's most civilized and developed nations, we have been denied permission by friendly governments, for reasons of security, to land anywhere, but in the tiny, and still neutral, Republic of Djibouti. Elsewhere around us, brothers and neighbors are engaged in homicide with means made available to them by those who lead humanity on our joint road into the third millennium. To the innocent masses in all industrialized countries, we direct our appeal. We must wake up to the insane reality of our time, we are all irresponsible, unless we demand from the responsible decision makers that modern armaments must no longer be made available to people whose former battle axes and swords our ancestors condemned. Our planet is bigger than the reed bundles that have carried us across the seas, and yet small enough to run the same risks unless those of us still alive open our eyes and minds to the desperate need of intelligent collaboration to save ourselves and our common civilization from what we are about to convert into a sinking ship. In the years that followed, Heyerdahl was often outspoken on issues of international peace and the environment. The Tigris had an 11-man crew, Thor Heyerdahl, Norway, Norman Baker, USA. Carlo Mari, Italy, Yuri Senkevich, USSR, Herman Carrasco, Mexico, Hans Peter Bone, Norway, Rashad Nazar Salim, Iraq, Norse Brock, USA, Toru Suzuki, Japan, Detlef Soitzik, Germany, and Espion Damas, Denmark. Heyerdahl made four visits to Azerbaijan in 1981, 1994, 1999 and 2000. Heyerdahl had long been fascinated with the rock carvings that date back to about 8th 7th millennia BCE at Gobustan, about 30 miles 48 kilometers west of Baku. He was convinced that their artistic style closely resembled the carvings found in his native Norway. The ship designs, in particular, were regarded by Heyerdahl as similar and drawn with a simple sickle shaped line, representing the base off boat, with vertical lines on deck, illustrating crew or, perhaps, raised oars. Based on this and other published documentation, Heyerdahl proposed that Azerbaijan was the site of an ancient advanced civilization. He believed that natives migrated north through waterways to present day Scandinavia using ingeniously constructed vessels made of skins that could be folded like cloth. When voyagers traveled upstream, they conveniently folded their skin boats and transported them on pack animals. On Heyerdahl's visit to Baku in 1999, he lectured at the Academy of Sciences about the history of ancient Nordic kings. He spoke of a notation made by Snorri Sturluson, a 13th century historian mythographer in Inglinga Saga, which relates that Odin, a Scandinavian god, who was one of the kings, came to the north with his people from a country called Usser. See also House of Inglings and Mythological Kings of Sweden. Heyerdahl accepted Snorri's story as literal truth, and believed that a chieftain led his people in a migration from the east westward and northward through Saxony, to Finn in Denmark, and eventually settling in Sweden. Heyerdahl claimed that the geographic location of the mythic Osir or Esir matched the region of contemporary Azerbaijan, east of the Caucasus Mountains and the Black Sea. We are no longer talking about mythology, Heyerdahl said, but of the realities of geography and history. Azerbaijanis should be proud of their ancient culture. It is just as rich and ancient as that of China and Mesopotamia. In September 2000, Heyerdahl returned to Baku for the fourth time and visited the archaeological dig in the area of the Church of Kish. One of the last projects of his life, Yacht and Pa Odin, the search for Odin, was a sudden revision of his Odin hypothesis, in furtherance of which he initiated 2001-2002 excavations in Azov, Russia, near the Sea of Azov at the northeast of the Black Sea. He searched for the remains of a civilization to match the account of Odin in Snorra Sturluson quite a bit north of his original target of Azerbaijan on the Caspian Sea only two years earlier. This project generated harsh criticism and accusations of pseudoscience from historians, archaeologists and linguists in Norway, who accused Heyerdahl of selective use of sources, and a basic lack of scientific methodology in his work.
Mark. His central claims were based on similarities of names in Norse mythology and geographic names in the Black Sea region, for example Azov and Esser, Udi and Odin, Tyre and Turkey. Philologists and historians reject these parallels as mere coincidences, and also anachronisms, for instance the city of Azov did not have that name until over 1,000 years after Heyerdahl claims the Esser dwelt there. The controversy surrounding the search for Odin project was in many ways typical of the relationship between Heyerdahl and the academic community. His theories rarely won any scientific acceptance, whereas Heyerdahl himself rejected all scientific criticism and concentrated on publishing his theories in popular books aimed at the general public. Heyerdahl's Odin hypothesis has yet to be validated by any historian, archaeologist or linguist. Heyerdahl also investigated the mounds found on the Maldive Islands in the Indian Ocean. There, he found sun-oriented foundations and courtyards, as well as statues with elongated earlobes. Heyerdahl believed that these finds fit with his theory of a seafaring civilization which originated in what is now Sri Lanka colonized the Maldives, and influenced or founded the cultures of ancient South America and Easter Island. His discoveries are detailed in his book The Maldive Mystery. In 1991, he studied the pyramids of Guimar on Tenerife and declared that they were not random stone heaps but pyramids. Based on the discovery made by the astrophysicists Aparicio, Belmonte, and Esteban, from the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias that the pyramids were astronomically oriented and being convinced that they were of ancient origin, he claimed that the ancient people who built them were most likely sun worshippers. Heyerdahl advanced a theory according to which the Canaries had been bases of ancient shipping between America and the Mediterranean. Heyerdahl was also an active figure in green politics. He was the recipient of numerous medals and awards. He also received 11 honorary doctorates from universities in the Americas and Europe. In subsequent years, Heyerdahl was involved with many other expeditions and archaeological projects. He remained best known for his boat building, and for his emphasis on cultural diffusionism. He died, aged 87, from a brain tumor. After receiving the diagnosis he prepared for dying by refusing to eat or take medication. The Norwegian government granted Heyerdahl the honor of a state funeral in the Oslo Cathedral on April 26, 2002. His cremated remains lie in the garden of his family's home in Kalamashari. Asteroid 2473 Heyerdahl is named after him, as Arnhem's Thor Heyerdahl, a Norwegian Nansen class frigate, along with MS Thor Heyerdahl, now renamed MS von Italien, and Thor Heyerdahl a German three-masted sail training vessel originally owned by a participant of the Tigris expedition. Thor Heyerdahl Upper Secondary School in Larvik, the town of his birth, is also named after him. Heyerdahl's numerous awards and honors include the following. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.